hello hello so I'm first going to show you some uh, results from the experiment now that they've dried this first one was my first test with olive oil you can see there's a lot of cell shapes in here uh, it preserved it appears to have preserved a bunch of little chunks of white paint they're not chunky they're flat but it it looks like the oil encapsulated the paint and once it dried out and was pushed to the surface it looks like it left all these little super clean selections of white paint in it. It also encouraged typical cell formation like you would see. Uh, we got the little veiny styles here. We have the holes where the acrylic is kind of pressed open as the paint comes up, as the uh, oil comes up through it. And in general, it looks exactly how you would get with a traditional silicone style oil. The surface doesn't appear to be tinted or stained. We have true white colors uh, along the sides here where the paint wasn't mixed very much with the other color. Uh, the surface, however, is pretty oily. Usually on a silicone painting, the surface will have like mm, a random little handful of spots where silicone is collected. But the surface of this paint has tons of tiny little leftover olive oil and it's super greasy so I'll definitely have to wash this one off well before I get to the varnishing step. That being said it's uh, it was a pretty big success so we're gonna look at we're gonna confirm that the olive oil doesn't stain white paint or lighter colors and won't affect the overall look with this next experiment. Before that, I have these two canvases, these very boring flat canvases in which I tested soaps to try and thin my acrylic paint. Didn't work, thinned out the paints way too strongly and they just immediately blended with each other and mixed down to this gray color. So I would not recommend working with soaps and the surface of these canvases is so freaking slippery right now that I am trying to decide if it's worth it to even wash these off and reuse them. It's just, it's gross. So, soap, not a good idea. Olive oil, looks like you'll be just fine. Oof. Plus once the, uh, once we get to the paint section of this acrylic skin, it's almost impossible to tear it off in a single piece. The soap has really damaged the structural integrity of the acrylic paint. So again, just don't bother with soaps. Uh, I have to just discard this whole piece of freezer paper because uh, the skins are no good. Okay. Okay, what we got here, I have white paint, mixed onto the canvas in my normal fashion. I have three cups of paint and the colors I'll be using. I've added just a drop of olive oil to each of them. I've been using the exact same amount of olive oil as I would with silicone oil. So you're only gonna need one or two drops. These are, I think, four by four or five inch by five inch canvases. I'm not using a ton of paint. There's no olive oil in the white paint for these guys um, because I'm going to be running the white against this panel, which will be our control. Once I've finished painting these two canvases, I'm just going to add white paint with a ton of olive oil just to see if there's any amount that would stain the paint or the canvas and make it look gross. And then we can compare the unoiled white paints here versus the oiled white paint, which will be done separately, just oil and paint. That's all we'll be doing, nothing artistic. Um, but in terms of oil, I know there have been some people commenting and asking if there are silicone replacements because maybe you don't want a, a non-food safe oil in the house. You have children or pets you wanna be careful for, or maybe you simply can't buy silicone oil where you live. Um, for this case, even if the oil 
changes the color, which we'll find out at the end of this video. Even if that happens, you can still get the cells, you can get the shapes, and um, produce the paintings with an olive oil or a vegetable oil or a cooking oil. All that you need is something oily because the oil forces the water and the paints to stay separated so they don't blend as much. And as they don't blend, that's where you get them contained in these cell shapes. Um, in addition to the principles of density we've talked about in previous videos. What I'll be doing today is a little funnel painting because a big goal of this is to see if the olive oil will affect the color of the white paint. I'm practicing a negative space canvas and I'm trying to preserve as much of the white as possible on the canvas. So we're not using a lot of paint and therefore I want to have a little more control of what I am using in this funnel. Add a little bit of white to uh, mix up the colors here, help it run out a little more. Some of the yellow, not too much. This is going to be a more yellow painting. Okay. And just a little more white for good measure. Okay. So this one, let's have a go. I'm going to pull some of this guy off. Or maybe I'm just going to take my popsicle stick and I'm going to kind of bleed a little negative back into this guy. This particular area has a little more white than I. Or a little more of this teal color than I appreciate. I just kind of straight drag it through a couple here. Those are some really interesting colors though. I like this. Okay, it looks like the paint will be drying soon though, so I need to hurry up with this. To uh, keep this funnel clean between pores, I'm gonna add just a little bit of white paint through it over here off to the side. This will uh, help run some of the colors out and give it a quick rinse, so to speak. There we go. And who knows, that might turn into a interesting looking acrylic skin that I can reuse later. In the meantime, I'm gonna pinch the bottom of this off with my finger again. I'm gonna start with a little white paint so we can avoid that, uh, that concentration of teal that we saw in the previous paint. And I'm just gonna start layering in with my remaining paints. All right. I like the funnel on this technique. It's a nice little introduction keep the paint where I want it to be. I'm just gonna let this one pool up right here and I think I'm gonna rinse this one off into the canvas this time too. Just in the corner here, give it a little more. Mm. You know what, this bottom area looks a little, a little bland right now, doesn't it? I'm gonna hit it over here instead. Just a little bit. And to add to some of the flavor, I'm going to blow on it real careful. There we go. And I'm going to pull through again. You know, why not? Why the heck not? I like it just like that. That is perfect. Meanwhile, this guy on the right really isn't pulling his weight, is he? A little more of the white paint here. Swipe this back. 
help guide it along the edges. Oop. I don't like that. I don't want it to be muddy. There we go. Flip this around, use the other side where it's clean still. Make sure the canvas has nice even coverage. This will make it look nice when it dries because the paint will certainly uh, show lines. If you don't have even paint coverage, when it dries, you'll end up with uh, little ridges on your painting and you want to avoid that. That is definitely something that's hard to uh, explain away or cover up with other means. So I'm kind of tapping there. I like this better. It's got a real veiny look to it. The colors kind of bleed, they fan out. This is good. I haven't had this much fun with the pour in a little while. So, fun experiment on a couple fronts. There we go. Hit the corners. Okay. All right, we're good there. Now I'm gonna add the olive oil to my white paint. Just add a bunch in there. This is way more oil, uh, silicone. This is way more than you would add if you were adding just regular silicone. But you know what, just for good measure, I'm gonna go ahead and punk, open some of this olive oil and just get a good good chunk in there. That is way too much oil, so if there are any extreme results to be had, we will definitely see them when this is dry. And this will give us a good example of uh, any potential issues that will come up when working with olive oil or other food-based oils. Give us a real good stir. I can already feel this is not uh, combining very well so it doesn't even look that yellow right now with with the oil and paint is still fresh but I'm gonna take this over here on the canvas and I'm just pouring it straight out flat on the middle a nice little big white pancake there get these cups out of the way and I'm just gonna do the usual getting my tilt on spreading the uh, oil around the paint Spreading the paint around the canvas, all that good stuff, and we are covered. This way, like we were just talking about, uh, when you when you cover the surface of your painting, make sure that you get wet paint across the entire canvas. If there are dry spots or areas that haven't been painted on, those areas will be left with little lumps and ridges after the paint dries. You want to avoid that because it's very visually obvious and even if you have a negative space like this where it's white paint, a white canvas, it's very easy to see this is where the paint ends, this is where the canvas begins. So if you want to keep up the illusion of a seamless paint, just keep the canvas wet until it's covered. Once it's covered, allow it to dry uniformly all together at once and you'll have yourself a nice little painting there. Let's get my uh, hands cleaned off here and I'll get some up close shots for you at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I look forward from hearing more of you. Thank you for watching. Alright, welcome back. I hope you don't mind that I'm using the hand camera for this one instead of keeping it mounted on my little tripod here. Um, the paint on the plain white canvas has dried enough. And as I try and get this into focus, you can see that it is extremely glossy. I'm going to just run my hand over the top of this real quick. Do you see how much oil is on that? Holy moly. So, first of all, I'm going to a little hard because I love you guys. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope you're getting uh, good stuff out of this. But, holy moly, there's so much oil on this. What we can tell from this is, one, the paint does not stain compared to the white paint on my other canvases there is absolutely no color difference so you do not have to worry about your cooking oils contaminating the quality of 
your canvas or the paints therein. This is still the same kind of pristine white that uh, I have on every other painting I've ever done. It's not affected or stained by the oil in any way. But you can see that due to the excessive oil content from the pour that it has bubbled up to the surface and the entire thing is literally covered in these fine micro beads of oil. They're just all over the place, tiny, 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 tiny little beads and any kind of contact is spreading the oil out everywhere. So in observation, the olive oil or the cooking oil produces the same cell shapes as you would get with silicone. I'll focus. So you get the same cell shapes that you would with silicone, with the silicone oil or dimethicone, but silicone oils usually pool up in smaller areas. They, uh, you get a large concentration, but in a small area. With cooking oils, you get an enormous area but with super tiny concentrations, just tiny, 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 tiny little pieces of oil everywhere. In the end, this has no difference in the quality of the paint or the surface of the canvas. You can see that the uh, canvas here, while still drying a little bit, is exactly the same as any of my other works. But all in all, Olive oil or any cooking oil is a viable substitute. So if you've been having trouble getting hold of some silicone and you want to give pour painting a shot, go right ahead and you get yourself some cooking oil up in your paints. All right? We'll see you on the next video.